Flaxman was born in 1755, attended the Royal Academy, where he was regarded as a prodigy and was close to his fellow student, William Blake. His own father was a maker of decorative objects and worked for Josiah Wedgwood, who regarded the young Flaxman as a coxcomb, though great talent. Unaccountably, Flaxman failed to get the RA scholarship to Italy. Um, uh, and again, he lost out to someone no one's ever heard of, had no career at all. Um, so and he worked as a designer to Wedgwood to raise the money for his transformative Italian trip, which he took in 1787, staying there until 1794. Flexman was introduced to Haley in 1783 by George Romney, and Haley commissioned from him a monumental relief of his parents-in-law, the Reverend Thomas Ball, Archdeacon of Chichester Cathedral, who had died in 1770, um, and his wife, who died in 1783. This was the beginning of a long and fruitful relationship between the two, which led to a number of commissions for monuments in Chichester and elsewhere, for which Haley provided the epitaphs. It is interesting that Haley should have got to know Flaxman before he went to Italy, because the sculptor had clearly a very different personality in his youth than after he uh, returned from Italy. Flaxman's post-Roman personality has traditionally been defined by Fusely's sarcastic remark reported by Farrington to a group of artists as he was going to one of Flaxman's Royal Academy lectures as Professor of Sculptor, sculpture in 1810. Farewell, friends. Farewell, wine. Farewell, wit. I must leave you all and hear a sermon, the first pronounced by the Reverend John Flaxman. And when Haley first knew him, he was a romantic youth and a close friend of Blake, for whom for both of whom, the tragic figure of the youthful poet Thomas Chatterton, who committed suicide after rejection by the literary world of London, uh, was both an example and also a cautionary tale. All this is clear from Flaxman's drawing of circa 1780, which shows Chatterton receiving a bowl of poison from despair, in which Chatterton has the face of Flaxman himself. And in fact, Flaxman was, it, it seems to have been almost more romantically leaning towards Chatterton than Blake himself, which is surprising. <laughs>